I love fighter jets, and by the looks of it, you do too. The prime time of fighter aircraft was right here, during the Cold War, because what better way to keep the peace than to make everyone scared? So which American fighter jet should I choose? Heck, I'll do all of them! I can't do all of them. To save me from the stress, I will choose five fighter jets that I adore from the time period, starting with... The F-4 Phantom II is a fighter interceptor bomber, meaning that it shoots at planes, bigger planes, and ground planes. Wait, I'm right here! Being put into service in 1960, the Phantom was very good for its time. It had a top speed of Mach 2.2 and was pretty maneuverable despite being a heavy fighter at 30,000 pounds on an empty payload. But it had one fatal flaw. Uh, boss? Yeah? Well, I forgot the gun. You little... Uh, don't worry about it. While it is true that this plane does not have a gun, the story I have just made up is not. Engineers believe that dogfights in the future would be fought from beyond visual range. And that's partially correct, but engagements usually ended up being subsonic, and the enemy was too close to fire any missiles. Why aren't you shooting at me? I'm trying to, okay? You're too close! How does that make any sense? Changes were soon made to add the M61 Vulcan 20mm Gatling gun on the F4E. The Phantom had a multitude of different flavors, such as these on screen, but I want to finish this video within the next year, so I'm not going to cover them all. The F4 was very good, but was also getting very old, so the Navy decided to phase it out with the The F-14 Tomcat, whether you love it or hate it, you can't deny those swing wings are as cool as chili. The F-14 is a fighter interceptor specifically built for the Navy, meaning it needs to take off and land from this short stretch of sea-based land known as an aircraft carrier. Now you might be wondering, swing wing this, swing wing that, other than being sick as heck, why do they exist? And that's a great question, you little naive child. When the wings are fully extended, the Tomcat's stall speed is improved and becomes more maneuverable at lower speeds due to the increase in lift that the wings generate. In full Dorita mode, the wings sweep back to be more stable at higher speeds, but still being able to maneuver at these said speeds. The F-111 Aardvark's variable sweep wings proved to be so effective that it was implemented on the F-14, which aimed to replace it as well as the F-4 from earlier. The F-14 eventually retired and replaced by a simpler, more boring, younger cousin, the F-18. And you'll never guess why it was replaced. As it turns out, the swing wings were a very expensive nightmare to maintain, and the bottomless pit that was the US defense budget was not as bottomless as everyone thought. Yeah, it's still bottomless, but cost effectiveness was a bigger worry now that the Cold War was nearing an end. And the Air Force realized this and made... The F-16 Fighting Falcon, because this video is not in chronological order. The F-16 is pretty good at basically everything a fourth generation fighter can be good at. Starting off, it's a light multi-role fighter interceptor with an empty weight of less than 20,000 pounds. And if you all took 8th grade physical science, you'll know that being light means you can move around easier. The jet can carry a multitude of stuff externally, including air-to-air -air missiles, air-to-ground missiles, guided bombs, rockets, and fuel tanks depending on its mood. As long as the jet is under 37,500 pounds, because then it won't be able to take off. Being this light, the F-16 is capable of pulling up to 9 Gs, and once during Operation Desert Storm on January 19, 1991, an F-16 dodged 6 Iraqi SAMs in quick succession, without chaffs or flares. The Falcon can perform many tasks, hence being multi-role. These missions can range from defending airspace and intercepting enemy bombers to attacking enemy ground targets, and to even help you with your homework. I don't know, ask AI. No, that's not why I bought you! So you think that an F-16 being so capable would cost a pretty penny, right? Wrong. Well, for me, absolutely. But compared to most fighter jets, this is very affordable, coming in at $14.6 million USD for the A and B versions, but a little bit more for the C and D versions. That's just pocket change for a nation expanding their military. One reason a Falcon is so cheap is that it took a lot of inspiration from this plane, the... The F-15 Eagle is an icon of America. It is up there with guns and bald eagles. This 16-ton piece of pure freedom has an interesting backstory, and it all started with the Soviet Union's MiG-25 Foxbat. 
I'm not going to get too deep into it, but all you need to know is that the Foxbat was a revolutionary super fighter with supreme maneuverability, power, and weaponry. The Foxbat was so good, in fact, that it scared the US so badly they did what they do best and threw a bunch of money at someone hoping that what comes out is a deadly weapon. Therefore, the FX program was then set into motion with three main players competing for the contract, McDonnell Douglas, Fairchild Republic, and North American. McDonnell Douglas ended up winning the contract and began development on the F-15 Eagle. Let it be known, this thing was impressive. It's a perfect match for the Foxbat. Yo. Hello, I'm from Russia. Also, I brought this. I do not want it anymore. Alright, let's see what makes this thing so overpowered. So a certain Viktor Belenko brought America a gift despite the Soviet Union, and as it turns out, the MiG-25 was an awful fighter jet overhyped by the USSR. Imagine lying about something's capabilities just for your fabricated stats to still be beat. Being the equivalent to what the Fox Bat believed it could be, the Falcon had to be impressive, and it was. Nothing says, you can't beat me, like never being beaten, because this thing has a KDR of 104 to 0. So if you encounter an F-15, you have a 100% chance of getting deleted, unless you're in an F-22, which can easily down it and four more, because that's exactly what happened in a training exercise. Here's how each kill went down. Hey. Wuh. And on the topic of stealth... Let's talk about the F-117 Nighthawk and why it was such a game changer. No, of all the fighter jets in this video, this one's the odd one out, mainly because it isn't a fighter at all, it's a bomber. I couldn't help but to add this plane, mainly because it's so legendary, but also the library catalog didn't have any other books based on one sole fighter. This is all you have? Really? Pathetic. Anyways, the F-117 Nighthawk had a special ability. It was invisible. Well, not really. Grossly oversimplified, how radar works is by bouncing off an object back to where it came from, pinpointing the location of the object. The F-117's design scatters or absorbs the radar waves so that none can return for it to be detected. With this ability, the Nighthawk is able to penetrate deep into enemy airspace in the dead of night, strike an enemy target with two of its 2,000-pound laser-guided bombs, either the GBU-12 or the GBU-27, and be gone before the enemy has a chance to react. You'll never even know what hit ya! But why is it so angular? The F-117 has a stealthier cousin called the Hopeless Diamond, which can do absolutely nothing a plane can, hence the name Hopeless. Stupid. Boy, you sure are sharp, aren't you? The Hopeless Diamond was meant to be a representation of perfect stealth, which is what the F-117 was based on. The end of the Nighthawk's reign of terror occurred on March 29, 1999, when a SAM using lower radar frequencies locked onto an F-117 when its base doors were open. And due to the open doors being when the jet is most vulnerable, they're only open for about a second. By a huge stroke of luck, the SAM was successful in shooting down the Nighthawk and was soon retired. So yeah, I guess that's, that, that's all of them. Thank you all so much for watching to the end of this video. I know how much you guys like school projects. But most importantly, don't subscribe, but go to the pinned comment, because the channel that made it is me, who has an autistic obsession with paper airplanes. So if you want to look cool but mildly autistic, you should subscribe to that channel and learn a couple paper airplanes.